NVIDIA, GTC. We had data center. We had visualization. We had automotive uh, bonanza uh, out there. It was pretty incredible. So why don't you take the uh, the data center, some data center highlights. I mean, what were there, 16 uh, uh, releases? To, oh, uh, man, there, there was way too much to cover, certainly too much to cover in a five-minute segment. Uh, it was an impressive event. That's why, you know, we called it GTC the Future, this episode. You know, I, I did a piece. I dialed in on a couple, a couple of the big announcements um, that caught my attention. By the way, there were a lot. I mean, all this stuff going on with frameworks is super big, but, um, you know, conversational and driving the future. But let's talk about some, some, some big supercomputing. So there was some significant updates this year to the DGX lineup, which is the uh, super pod. And then they added this station element. And, you know, this, this one, I mean, just to get you a, a handle on it, the super pod um, is, is uh, you know, it's 20 DGX or, you know, A100s. It's built on its HDR networking. Um, it's got the, uh, you know, the, D, the new Bluefield DPU. Um, uh, and, and it's basically coming out right away, by the way, second quarter of this year. This thing is an absolute powerhouse for high performance computing. Um, and as the company continues to add the fabric, the networking, you know, with uh, uh, <laughs> with so many uh, just new features. And then they what I thought was maybe the coolest thing. And I'm sorry, by the way, I'm, I'm trying to move the banner while I'm talking. And by the way, you know, I'm just being honest with everybody. I apparently can't. Well, the other thing is. Well, the other thing is you've rebooted your system twice before we got on here. <laughs> oh man, I'm getting hit so hard. Yeah, it hasn't been it hasn't been my best technology morning. But here was something really interesting. So this powerhouse 20 um, uh, DGX A100 system is the super pod, but this new station pad was the one that really caught my attention. That was super cool. Um, I called it AI DCAS. See, because we need to brand everything, so I called it AI Data Center as a service. And what they've essentially done is, is created a super pod in a small form factor that can be shipped to the door of a company that's looking to do high performance computing uh, on the fly. You're talking about a $150,000 computer that a company, um, a, a research lab, an institution can essentially rent, um, Pat. And I think it's something like nine grand a month is what it comes out to. And this is a basically a powerhouse DGX tool to your door, you use it for 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, run your data science, uh, run your models on it, get your outputs. Um, and, and what I loved about it was, Pat, is we're seeing everything move into consumption, right? We're seeing this wild pivot and shift to all these consumption economics. And now you have, you know, $150,000 machine. And by the way, just to give you a sense, DGX Superpods, these uh, massive machines can go up to $60 million dollars for a single uh, machine. So that was, let, let me just quickly get on because there's too much here. I'm moving quickly. The other big announcement that I wanted to touch on was Grace. So, you know, GPUs is what NVIDIA is known for, training, inference, but GPUs, not anymore. So we know about the ARM acquisition, but Grace, which is gonna be coming out in 2023. So you got a little bit of time ahead of you, but you're talking about an, an, an NVIDIA, an ARM-based uh, machine. So the two companies working together and it's a CPU, data center CPU, trillion parameter capability. So I want everyone to understand this is not uh, NVIDIA coming out with the CPU to compete with everyday data center compute that's coming from Intel or coming from AMD. This is NVIDIA saying in the future, we are going to be having interactive, latency free, human conversations with the machine and you're going to need a powerhouse machine that has both CPU and uh, GPU and the right network fabric, Mellanox, all the tools, Bluefield, bringing all these technologies that you're hearing about together um, with almost a, you know seamless connectivity. And by the way, the first ones are going to be built in partnership with HPE coming out in 2023. And I believe they're going to the Swiss National Computing Center, Pat. So, so much for being quick, but at least I got back on track. No, you did. That was uh, good. 
and uh, you're doing great uh, meandering. Thank you. I needed that. I needed that. Uh, meandering through these tech issues. Now drink a couple gallons of coffee and we'll uh, we'll get we'll, we'll nail this. So uh, one comment I want to make on Grace, uh, there was a little bit of uh, people who didn't quite understand how Grace fit in. Don't be confused. Grace is not a general purpose processor that competes with Nvidia, sorry, that competes with AMD and Intel or even uh, something like AWS Graviton 2. Uh, it is uh, not the highest, um, it is not maximized for integer. It is maximized for throughput and using shared memory uh, between the GPU and, and the CPU. And uh, so don't go there. But what I'd like to do is, is hit on some automotive. Essentially, um, NVIDIA took all of their latest and greatest components and put that into an autonomous vehicle platform called Atlan. So Atlan has Grace, as Daniel talked about, uh, also has um, uh, Bluefield uh, DPU, uh, not the latest and greatest, but uh, you know, essentially... Uh, giving high performance uh, networking offload uh, in addition to security uh, features. And I think the big thing here is over a thousand tops, uh, which is big, 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 big time. And the company wants to scale this architecture from L2 plus to L5, you know, L5, uh, no steering wheel and no driver. Uh, so think of a, a, a robo taxi. Uh, think of L2 Plus as as kind of a step up from uh, today's um, technology inside of the latest and greatest uh, from Mr. Elon uh, Musk. So uh, Nvidia at GTC hitting on uh, you know what you'd expect them to hit this on. Uh, which is, you know, data center prowess. They added in networking, and they also added in a an upgraded CPU. And by the way, this isn't the first CPU that NVIDIA has done. Uh, NVIDIA has been doing CPUs, uh, ARM-based CPUs and automotive, and uh, uh, it's um, what it's doing with Nintendo for, for years. So don't overplay this one. Uh, it's not going to, uh, Grace is not going to perform uh, as, as well on like a specint as even a 2019 uh, AMD or, or Intel processor. So don't go there. Uh, the one thing we didn't see uh, was a brand new graphics architecture. And it's funny, nobody talked about that, uh, but we did not see a brand new architecture. And I don't know exactly what that's a, a signal of, but uh, I think we're gonna talk about some NVIDIA competition at the very end of uh, the segment. Yeah, it, it, you know, and I know we got to keep moving here, but yeah. I think overall the the there was a lot of strength in the announcements. I saw I felt a lot of focus move towards uh, towards software, towards uh, partnerships, frameworks. You know, you heard some of the things. Uh, you know, some of the focuses like Clara, where you have technologies that are being used to you know shorten the time it takes for a model to be able to spit out a pharmaceutical grade product. Now again, I've oversimplified it massively, but you're talking about something that had a ten year cycle, and now you're adding software technology that can take these cycles down half or 80% is actually what Jensen said. So there's just a lot of ecosystem. I mean, at some point, the maturity on what comes to market has to be part of the story too. And I think there was a lot more of those.